How's it hanging? I'd say slightly to the rear. <laughs> well, thanks to my dad, we got everything back on there. He had to cut off the hub. Then we had to basically re-thread it and everything with a new nut. Cut off the hub, cut off the nut, everything. But new hub on there, tire back on. All right, so real quick, I fed through my line. Fisher steel fish tape. Fed that through my rigging tube all the way up to my spool, a flat uh, duplex wire. So that just means it has two wires within this. And I am going to be running one line all the way you know, under there and then all the way under the gunnel cap for the bow light up there. And then I'm going to cut that and then I'm gonna run it again for the stern light back there. I have other wire to run, but that's what I'm gonna do with this spool right here. So let's clear it through here. I have a little cut out all the way back there. Whoops, you can see. So I'm just gonna run it up through there and obviously under the gunnel cut. All right, so the deed is done. I cut it. This should be able to reach to anywhere in the console, wherever, the, wherever I mount the fuse panel. Also, there's plenty of room all the way in the bow. Like there's extra slack, at least a, at least a foot maybe even two foot of extra slack, which I'll leave a little bit of slack up there, but you know, if I really need it for back here, then I'll be good. And uh, I just need to figure out a way to secure this so it doesn't go back in there. And as you can see, it's coming up through there and you may be wondering where in the world is the wire? Well, shout out to previous owner who I bought it from, who was planning on rebuilding it. I can't see what y'all are seeing, but y'all can probably see the PVC up there, right? Somewhere, there's one PVC there. There's another PVC, I think, somewhere around here. And then we have some PVC right here that I completely missed. Crap, I didn't even realize. What I gotta figure out is the proper amps for the proper gauge wire. This is actually kind of a fun process. Uh, I've been running some wire, as y'all know, but I ran a little bit more wire. You know, I have the main power. That is a 10 gauge wire by Anchor. So, you know, all 10 copper marine grade and whatnot. So is the uh, duplex. But uh, this will run to the um, terminal switch, you know, my master switch that's back there that will come off and power the fuse panel. And then I'll also have on the same output, this output right here will also have, uh, we'll have it stacked on. So that one go into the fuse panel and another one go into the motor. But obviously that's gonna be, I think like two gauge or something, give or take, probably two gauge. And that'll be right on there with a, a crank battery and in input one and a dual purpose battery. So crank and deep cycle and in input two. So I'm also trying to figure out if I want to put my dual purpose under my console because I don't think two will fit in those boxes. Um, yeah, that's, so that's probably what I have to do. I'll just have to get a big two gauge wire to go from the console all the way to this kill switch or this master switch selector. That'll be in the rear box where all that wiring is right back there. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. I just cut this wire with the end on it because this will be hooked up here. And I need to put one of these ends on it to hook it up to, I have this 30 amp breaker, it's 10 gauge wire. So 30 amp uh, ignition protected waterproof uh, breaker just in case, I don't know. That's what they said to do so. And by they, just like in my research. So if that helps protect things, I'm gonna add that in. And I'll probably put this right around here, right? I think that'd be a good spot for it, right under there. I'm not like drilling into the hole or anything like that. So good spot right there under the seat. And then this will be right next to it like so. I think I'll be happy with that. Now that's the way to do it right there. And also the way I do this, and I try to keep them together by twisting that right there. And then I come in and you see how this is twisted like that. So I just go in and to avoid any like pricking, I just kind of twist it on like so. And it should be good, nice and snug. 
Couldn't find a butane torch. Don't have a heat gun, so... Yep. Bueno. Switch. Breaker. And boom. There it is. Well, I can see that. And there it is. Obviously, that'll go on the wall, but I'm obviously wait until I have everything else set up in here first with the battery and the bigger wires and the hole drilled in the side and whatnot like that for the rigging tube to the motor, that is. Uh, before, yeah, before I drill that in. Um, also, you see this, you see some non-painted over here. Just ignore that, that doesn't exist, that's perfect. And would you look at that? So we have our power to the fuse panel. Got to throw a fuse in there. Remember, this is not hooked up to any battery or nothing as of yet. And then we have our two positives right here going in slot one and three i just kind of want to put them next to each other because one's a stern light one's the bow light and then we have our negatives going into the negative bus right there and uh i actually only came over here to paint but i guess this was you know kind of productive <laughs> but as for wiring this will be the negative coming out the battery but since i'm pretty sure i'm going to put a battery up here but not 100 percent sure i don't need to run any of the uh 10 gauge or 14 gauge i think i was going to do 10 gauge 10 gauge negative wire to this what i actually may have to do is run some hefty gauge from the crank battery which will be in the back to this dual purpose crank deep cycle battery up here and that'll be you know grounded to each other and then run the 10 gauge or whatever to right here so yeah i think that's the idea all right so the painting wasn't as satisfying as it was the first time because i was just going over with another coat but uh you know it doesn't really show much on camera but everything looks pretty white you know this is kind of like that off-white which i admit if i would have done that it would have been a lot less bright inside that boat <laughs> i'm about blind by the time i got out of it but uh this is what it's looking like Ooh, look at that angle that's nice okay and then pretty sure I got basically everything over here. And obviously I did the console. You may be able to, yeah, you can still see a little bit of funkiness and how the paint pulled into the, uh, the fairing and then pulled into the fiberglass versus everything else. Like, I think that's where the fairing is anyway. But I hit the gunnel cap top and everything. I hit the bulkhead up there and I hit this. I didn't hit the sides or anything because those already have two coats. Ooh crap i need to hit the boxes i gotta get the boxes with that and then i'm gonna come in with the non-skid all over the floor actually let me just show you the inside so we got the floor all coated with its final coat remember we put on non-skid at first and what it didn't cover it wasn't completely white and then we put on wet edge from total boat and then we put on another layer of non-skid just because i bought a gallon of the uh uh, wet edge stuff so figured it eh, let me just get it all white to make sure that i have enough paint and then i'm just going to cover the rest with non-skid i use maybe half of the quart of the non-skid on this go around so that's how it looks it ain't perfect but it's good enough i know bugs are going to come and touch this and get stuck and whatnot but you know you gotta do what you gotta do i don't have anywhere inside to really paint it and we have this deal back here. I just kind of organized everything. So for the rest of my wiring, I have everything I need, except for the things that I don't know I need, which hopefully is nothing. And then over here in this garage, I have my hydraulic steering. I have my throttle. I ordered two Teleflex cables for the gear shifted as well as for the throttle. And something I'm confused about, is where do these plug in? Do all of them plug into something? Do only some of them? Because if only some of them, then I have some connections right here, but I think these are the only connections that I have for the gauges, unless I just need to get other, another wire. But I thought that I had all of, I, I thought that I had all of the controls and everything that I needed from there. I must've missed misinterpreted or just didn't look close enough you know i looked i'm like oh, okay so i hooked these up to this and i hooked those up to this but actually i hooked ignition up to this and um yeah so uh, i don't know i have to do a little bit of research 
And maybe I'll just get like, what is it, like a ECM cable and I can plug it in. I'm not sure. If you're curious, this is the tech. And then this one is the speed and fuel. I got some two stroke oil. I got my reservoir. I have to get a few hoses for inside from the oil hose from the reservoir to the motor, as well as a fuel hose from this deal, the separator to the motor itself as well. I thought I had it, but like <laughs> the adapter on the motor is really tiny. It's actually the same as this hose. So something I need to do is just cut off a little bit of this hose and say, hey, I need however many feet of this. All right, give me that for the oil hose and the fuel hose because they're both the same size. I just need to get the actual fuel hose and not some, not some garden hose <laughs> or whatever this is. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, again, I never know if I'm, how I'm going to organize these videos, but if that's it for this video, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I will see y'all next week. If not, and I'll see y'all in a second when 